Douglas the Traveling Dog, written by Mary Gorrell and illustrated by Samantha Gorrell. A long time ago, when Graham and Grandpa were young, before Grandpa became a lawyer and Graham became a professor, Grandpa brought home a surprise. This surprise fit in his coat pocket and was small, white, and furry. What in the world? asked Graham. Why, he's no bigger than a guinea pig. I know, replied Grandpa proudly. I found him alongside the railroad tracks. He was crying and whining, probably abandoned by someone. He's adorable, said Graham. What should we name him? He looks like a slug, Grandpa explained. Let's name him Doug the Slug. The name stuck, but was later lengthened to Douglas. And just like that, Douglas became a member of the family. Douglas was a smart and cute puppy. He was mostly white with a brown spot over one eye, one brown ear, and a brown patch at the beginning of his tail. Like most puppies, Douglas grew quickly. His little slug body morphed into a sleek, slender frame accentuated by very long legs. He was quite the handsome dog. As Douglas grew, he began to explore the neighborhood. Back in those days, Dogs weren't kept in pens as much as they are today. At least our dogs weren't. And so Douglas had the freedom to check out the streets where he lived. Some days he'd be gone for long stretches and Grandma and Grandpa would worry about him, but he always came back, some would say, like a bad penny. There he goes, walking along the neighborhood streets. do dee do dee do one day, after he'd been out on his, one of his long expeditions, Graham noticed something on the front porch that hadn't been there before. Lo and behold, it was a really nice welcome mat. It was placed right in front of the door. Maybe it was not quite symmetrical, but it had definitely been placed. Ooh, looky there. Hmm, wonder where that mat came from. The mat was made of thick straw-like material and had the word welcome written on it in bold black letters. It was a fine mat. Graham couldn't be positive, but she thought Douglas had brought this wonderful gift for her and Grandpa. Hmm, maybe. A few days after the arrival of the welcome mat, Graham noticed something else new on the front porch. It was a large hunk of cheese. Oh. Graham picked it up, and aside from a few teeth marks and a little drool, it was in perfect shape. And because Graham and Grandpa didn't have very much money then, she took it into the kitchen, poured boiling water on it, and served it as part of their dinner that night. There's the boiling water. Let's see what else is in this picture. Oh, cheese with some teeth marks. And there is something very funny at the bottom. It's a dog nose. The first, the final gift was probably a more selfish acquisition. Douglas had somehow managed to find a pup tent, which he delivered once again to the front porch. Looks sort of like an umbrella, but it's really a tent. It was orange and just the right size for him. Graham and Grandpa set it up in the backyard, and Douglas spent many a fine sunny afternoon lounging in his very own personal hideaway. There he is. You may think that this is made up, but every part of this story is true, honestly. And there is Douglas. So, Douglas continued his travels, and he decided that he would go further and further away from home. Now, we didn't know this, but we found out little by little that Douglas had been going all around town. One day, I went down to the meat market, which was called Hayes Meat Market, and I went in to ask the butcher if he had any bones for my dog. And he said, what kind of a dog do you have? I said, I have a white dog, it's quite tall, a brown spot over one eye, one brown ear, and before I could even finish, the butcher said, I know that dog. And he said, in fact, he was here this morning 
to get his bone. I said, he was already here? He said, yeah, today's Tuesday, it's meat day. Your dog comes every Tuesday and gets a bone. I couldn't even believe that was true, but apparently it was. So since Douglas had already gotten his bone, I went home, but stopped at another store called Ralph's Tea Mart on the way home to get some milk. And while I was there in the dairy aisle, I felt a little bit of snuffling on my hand. And when I looked down, I realized that Douglas had followed me into the store. So I guess I know where that cheese came from. More stories to follow.